Um, let's have a roll call of members. And um, this time, this, uh, this month, let's do it in order of seniority. So Rachel Blaine, are you here? Here, Rachel Blaine. Good, good. and Mary Cloutier? And Mary is here. Hey, Mary Clue here, here. I'm sorry, I'm, I don't have my second screen tonight, so I'm going back and forth. <laughs> Denise Mason. <clears throat> Denise Mason here. Natalie wolf Cole here. Kathy Watrova. Here. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester here. And Andrea Liebson. Andrea Liebson here. Excellent. Um, I think this time too, we'll be trying, um, we, we have been sort of a casual group and let's try, Tonight, um, we have an incredibly full agenda, as you've all seen. And so in addition to trying to be really terse and succinct with our comments, trying to make sure that we speak just once, one at a time, and I'll recognize people so you can either raise your hand or um, raise it via the, the, uh, the reactions on the, on the Zoom. <clears throat> Let's, um, we'll try to get into the habit of being a little bit more formal. <clears throat> um, Minutes, and mary um, No, I was not at the last uh, meeting, so I would abstain from that. Um, I don't know who does have the copy or who did do the minutes last time, but they would have been forwarded not to me because that would not be okay. okay. We did um, hold off on uh, approving the minutes from April 5th when you were there, so. Um, okay, I move to approve the minutes from April 5th. Is there a second? Kathy Sylvester, I second it. Thank you, Kathy. Any discussion? Um, <clears throat> let's see. Do And I guess since we're on Zoom, we still do need to have a roll call for all of these things. So Rachel. Rachel Blaine, aye. And Mary? And Mary Cloutier, aye. Denise? Denise Mason, aye. Annalie Wolfkull, aye. Kathy Wittroba, sorry, Kathy. Kathy Wachoba, aye. And I don't recall if Kathy Sylvester and Andrea Leibson were here. Kathy Sylvester? Uh, Kathy Sylvester abstained because I wasn't there. And Andrea Leibson? Andrea Leibson, I abstained. I wasn't present either. Okay, so the, the minutes from April 5th pass. Um, and then from uh, May 10th, 2021, they were distributed. Um, motion to approve the minutes of May 10th. I did not see the, where were the minutes of May 10th? Um, they might have gone through your secondary email. Mm, they were sent by Sue. They were uh, sent by Sue? Okay. Uh, yeah, with the agenda for tonight. Uh, actually, member and um, Anna Lee, you had to send it to me or you had to ask Sue to send it to me because she didn't send it to me. She probably didn't send it to Anna Lee. To Andrea. Uh, Andrea. Uh, I meant. Well, we can hold off on um, approving them or you two can stay on those. Um, <clears throat> I did get them. And so I didn't see them that we approved the main. Okay. The main minutes. All right. <clears throat> Move to approve the minutes of May 10th. Uh, can we have a second? I second that, Denise Mason. Thank you, Denise. Um, discussion? Uh, Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, aye. And Mary Cloutier. Mary Cloutier, aye. <clears throat> Denise Mason. Denise Mason, aye. Emily Wolfkull, aye. Kathy Wittroba. Aye. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy <clears throat> Sylvester, aye. And Andrew Lipson. <clears throat> uh, Andrew Lipson, abs abstain. I didn't see them. I'm sorry. Okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> old business uh, orientation. Denise. Okay. Thanks, Emily. Well, first of all, Rachel, thank you for lending me, which I think Jen still has, your book. And what we did is I met with Jen a, a few times just to go through and to determine what needed to be updated and determine that most of the information was really useful information. So Jen just, she did the lion's share of the work. So thank you so much, Jen, for all the work that you did on that. And um, I know it's a thick sort of... Um, yeah, it's a very big binder. And just to let you know, I think, you know, we, we talked with Jen and we will have a training. So we should probably determine that tonight. 
And my recommendation before the training is that you just take a look. You do not have to read through it because it's, yeah, you just, you don't need to read through it. You just need to become familiar with the sections. And then if you have any specific questions, I would suggest to write them down. And then, you, then we'll have the training to go through that and we'll be able, and you know, the training will just be private because it's not, you know, we're not discussing anything. So it doesn't need to be a public meeting. So does that sound good, Jen? Oh, we have a number. That sounds great, Denise. Thank you and, and so much for your work. Um, we have a number of things to schedule. So. Jen has her hand lifted. Uh, oh, Jen. Sorry, I was just gonna make a comment that um, specifically like when you get the agenda, then to look through the agenda and see what, let's say it says an A&R. So then you would go to that part of the book, but we can go through that, through that later. I was just saying, you know, that it just doesn't, I remember the first time I had a um, zoning bylaw and I tried to go home and sit down and read it. And my boss was like, you don't do that. <laughs> so um, anyway. Yeah, I think that's a great suggestion. Thank you, Jen. Yeah. <clears throat> it's more um, of a reference, reference material. So, uh, Annalie, I'm sorry, do you want to wait until we schedule the other things before we would determine, a, you know, time to train? Uh, why don't we keep, yes, why don't we keep that in mind? Okay. Thank you. That's good. Because I think uh, it'll be important. Um, <clears throat> I'll try to get it all together. All right, thank you so much. Um, so second on, on um, old business is the proposed planning board bylaws, which everyone or many of us have been living with for the past several weeks. Uh, <clears throat> one of the uh, sort of an FYI piece for you, um, the most recent warrant that I saw, well, doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> we had a proposed bylaw that the select board um, had suggested that has to do with the change in the gender um, gender designation of the select board or the board of select men, um, and that um, that the, that's actually two bylaws for town meeting. One is to change the general laws in accordance with that uh, terminology, and the second is to change the zoning. Uh, laws in accordance with the terminology. Unfortunately, the public here, it, it, just like any other bylaw, um, that uh, that bylaw needed to have a public hearing and the posting didn't happen in time. And so that part of the um, town vote will be removed. The part that has to do with the um, zoning bylaws, there still will be the vote at town meeting in terms of the general bylaws. And then at our next town meeting, which potentially might be in the fall, we will bring that one forward after a proper public hearing. So FYI, if you um, don't see that and you were just really looking for it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> any questions about that? Okay. I guess I, do, I have one question. That seemed to me that was determined by state or Commonwealth decree, wasn't it? So it's still, I just, so it's a question. Do we still, requ still requires um, a, a comments from, uh, from the public, even though this, the uh, Commonwealth has said we should change this? Any bylaw that we um, propose a change to requires a public hearing. So any of our, our, our Deerfield bylaws require a public hearing. Um, we could actually schedule, I mean, we, we may, as we see with <clears throat> lots of meetings that need to be scheduled, um, we most likely, <clears throat> excuse me, um, July 5th, is Independence Day observed, that would be our first Monday in July. So potentially <clears throat> the next uh, Monday in July is July 12th. And we could potentially schedule the public hearing for that time. Um, we could have it sooner or later, it doesn't really, I don't think it really, <clears throat> it really matters a lot. If anybody have any strong feelings about that, if so, then we would just set it for the agenda for the July meeting. Otherwise we'll wait until the um, idea, you know, the, the possibility, probability of a um, fall town meeting is closer. Maybe we should just wait. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. We can just wait on scheduling the public hearing for that. Cool. 
All right. <clears throat> um, otherwise, um, we certainly have had a number of um, information sessions with uh, the general public, with various other committees and boards. And um, in regards to our other bylaws, the solar site plan review, the municipal frontage, formula-based business. Um, there have been some suggestions in relation to uh, some of those bylaws about having changes. Um, I think as, as I mentioned, as I had a communication to all of you today that changes on the town meeting floor can occur if it's for clarification, if it is <clears throat> simpler um, or less restrictive and What's the third piece? I don't remember. Less restrictive, clarification. Yeah, Rachel? Um, You're mute. Simpler, yeah. less restrictive. Yeah. In any event, um, <clears throat> we did, uh, um, and, and one of the bylaws in particular that was brought up <clears throat> with some questions had to do with solar, and those were the bylaws that I sent out to you. Um, the clarification, <clears throat> excuse me, that these new solar bylaws replace the old solar bylaws. And then there also was um, some section numbering that needed to be cleaned up. And then there was the question of um, the size requirements for a small solar, in, small solar installation. Um, and that those things potentially could be, well, the size requirement, I don't know how well that fits into the, it certainly is a clarification. Um, one could say whether it's more or less <laughs> restrictive in any event. Um, we did um, check with Lisa Mead uh, Town Council, part of her comments in general about, <clears throat> um, about changes on the town meeting floor. Yes, 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 yes. And and this one in particular was that proposed- You went in there. Oops, we got somebody who's not on mute or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, proposing men, uh, this is from Lisa Mead, our town, one of our town council <clears throat> advisors. <clears throat> proposing amendments on the floor of town meeting <clears throat> will lead to confusion, I can guarantee. So hold on to your hat. Requested changes might put the bylaw at risk would be my warning. Um, with solar in particular, one of the things that has been brought up in some of our various discussions is that our solar bylaw primarily addresses medium and large scale solar install installations. And that in fact, it would behoove us to uh, <clears throat> go back and actually uh, do a little bit more work on solar bylaws for small scale installations. So I anticipate that we will be most likely wanting to do that. Um, but we're not just, I mean, this, this uh, conversation about making amendments on the town meeting floor isn't just restricted to solar, it really has to do with any of our bylaw, our bylaw amendments. So I don't know if we can have a little discussion about that? What do people feel about that? Denise? Well, generally, you know, I'm thinking, I know, I know we were just, <laughs> we just had a discussion last week on this with the finance committee. Um, but, you know, if, if it's going to be difficult and confusing to make those changes at town meeting, maybe we should just leave it as is and see where, you know, see what happens. And then um, if for some reason it's voted down, we'll go back to the table, we'll make those changes, bring it up again at the, at the future town meeting. So it's less confusing. I mean, you know, we're, we're all sort of entrenched in this, but you know, when you're a town meeting and the solar bylaw is very lengthy, unless you can give a very succinct ex explanation of what's going on, I would recommend not doing that. But I think it, <clears throat> I saw some heads nodding on that. Are there any more comments, especially for people who have been attending these town meetings over the years? I'm just nodding my, I'm sorry, and Mary Cloutier. I'm, I'm just nodding my, I agree. Okay. With that. Hmm. 
I would say the same. I think that um, this is Rachel Blaine that um, we're fixing up a part of the bylaw that needed fixing up and we walked by something that we haven't had as much problems with. I mean, we've had these big um, installations come into town and we've, we've had to manage each one so separately. Um, this way it gives us some guidelines for the big ones. Um, but the small ones are going to come more frequently and we just walk by it. And whether we clean that up on the next go around um, or include it in this one, this proposal, I, I, it's kind of six in one basket, half dozen in the other. Because it wasn't, it wasn't there yet anyway. So I, I'm with Denise on this. Okay. Um. Are there any more comments from the um, planning board? And if not, then we have a comment from the public. Uh, Kathy? I, I was just going to say I agree. I think we need to try to get this passed to protect us for the medium and large and go back and do what was recommended on the small, you know, soon. But we should make headway if we can with this. So I would agree with Denise. Thank you, Kathy. Um, are there other comments now from the public? Yes, Bruce. Bruce? Yes. Yes, Bruce, can you hear me? Uh, Bruce A. Peters. Um, I was looking for an update on that sort of bylaw. And, am I on? Can uh, you hear me? Yes. Yeah, you're cutting you, out. Can you hear me? Keep trying. What's that? Oh, you were well, cutting out something. Keep trying. It's good. How about if I move a little closer to? Okay. I guess what I'm concerned with is there has been no cross referencing with the whole rest of the zoning bylaws right from the get go. Uh, most every sentence and or paragraph has not been vetted for other parts including but not limited to one of the uh, references to section 5400. If the new bylaw uh, passes, then that section re re referencing that is no good because the numbers have changed. Uh, the way this is done right now, um, you have multiple numbers. You haven't deleted sections out of the old, um, uh, the existing solar bylaw, and yet you've created new numbers. So now you have uh, opposing uh, uh, schedules. The use, the use uh, uh, chart uh, did not uh, made no reference to deleting the 2230 sections that reference. The definitions at the end of the zoning have not been updated to match the new definitions of this proposed. And fortunately, you know, it's a, it's a great start, but unfortunately, the, 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 I just feel that it's really not ready for town meeting. I think it's going to create more confusion than it is uh, uh, reality. Yeah, I think it's going to be a waste of everybody else's time at this point in time, my own opinion. Thank you, Bruce. Denise? Be on the ward, so you know, it'll be brought forth at town meeting. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't think we can say, we can take it off at this point. I, I don't know, I would defer to Jen on that. This point, there's no removing it, so we just um, need to be, you know, right. just like the um, yeah, yeah. Well, well, yes, I'm gonna go see where. Uh, Kip, you need to mute yourself. Mute Again, Bruce, I'm not. I'm not really clear. I mean, I I heard. I heard what you said, but I'm not sure. I think the purpose of leaving the crossed out sections so, so that people would understand what has been changed in the bylaw. I'm not sure whether you know, I understood uh, you correctly. That's normally, yeah. Well, that's normally the way it's presented is, is you put, you don't touch existing ones. You show a cross out of what you're deleting. And then as you've done as a bold, but, uh, right from uh, as an instance, uh, you have a new 3820 of definitions, and 
it was 3812, but now in this new proposed bylaw, you have a new 3820 that's titled uh, definitions without uh, the 12, uh, 3812 in the existing document is general weakness. And it just goes on and on page after page of all this uh, uh, um, non-vetted stuff. Uh, it's 30, uh, 3830, which is general requirements in the new one, uh, was 3820 over there, but yet there's no reference to deleting 3821, 22, 23, and 24, which had the same verbiage later on with different numbers, but they haven't been shown as being deleted out of this document. So it, it, it just goes on and on through the whole thing. And those are just, you know, I have, I have, I think, two and a half pages of, of just, you know, uh, scribble notes that, uh, and I haven't gone halfway through it as to just, lack of coordination with the existing bylaw and or other bylaws. Oh, I'm, I mean, um, from the- it, it, it's your, it, You know, it's your decision. I, I just put my input. I don't, uh, certainly as I went back and reviewed, um, there were, I, I agree that the statement that this doesn't delete the previous bylaw is an important omission. Um, I didn't see that there were as many um, cross-reference problems as you found, but maybe that's all the more reason why the planning board goes forward with this so that conceptually we've got the town protected in the ways that are important for small and or for large and mid-scale installations. And then we really do well to include small and fix the cross-reference issues. So I guess it would be, if there's, is there any more discussion? Um, it would be a question of if anyone wanted to bring forward, um, I guess, especially in relation to solar, and then we could see whether or not there's any other questions on any of the other bylaws. Um, if anyone wants to bring forward a motion to, um, provide some floor amendments on the solar bylaw. Okay. Um, yeah. Lily has her hand with yeah. sure. <laughs> we'll finish. Sure, Lily, go ahead. I, I didn't know if you were finished with your questions. I, um, but there are a couple of uh, simple numbering ones that have been identified. Are you saying that motions on the floor of town meeting to fix those references, those are easy and clarification and all that stuff and not a big deal. So that, is that what you are proposing to do for this round? And do you need townspeople to do it? Because if I'm, I'm happy to be someone who does it, or would it be better to come from the planning board? Well, I think if we're, pl if we're thinking that there would be something that uh, should go to the town, then we're discussing it now. Um, in terms of even, as you say, some of those that are very simple um, clarifications, this in fact is where town council was advising, no, it can lead to more confusion and might in fact put the whole bylaw to jeopardy. So it's whether or not the planning board feels that um, cleaning up, especially those simple issues um, is, um, is in fact a risk and a, a risk that we choose to take. Thank you. Okay. Denise? Oh, yeah, okay, so at this point, so there may be, may be obviously a few little things that need to be cleaned up. Once again, I think it's a mistake to do that at the town meeting. I think it can be cleaned up, we can do that, and anything can be, you know, then presented at the town meeting that will take place later in the fall. So, I, you know, I don't think we can't, certainly can't do it on the spot now. It is a pretty lengthy pie law, so I don't think any of us are going to sit here and read through it and understand where the cross-referencing. Bruce, if you, if you want to send that, send everything that you found to Anna Lee, I think that would be great. And then we could take a closer look at that. Mm -hmm. I received some of those, so that which was helpful. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so it looks like we're not having any action on this. Oh. Aunt Mary has her hand up. 
I would, except I'm a two finger type for a nice bit. Oh, there was Anne Mary's hand. I you see. don't need to be a great typist, Bruce. You can write it by hand. And Mary, so and Mary, excuse um, me, and Mary. Well, I, I, I well, yeah, maybe. I've already. Thank you, and Mary. Um, I'm just saying. I was just thinking that I do remember a very lengthy um, planning board meeting where we did um, fix a bunch of these numbers. So I kind of would love it if Bruce, you could even just send over the numbers and not anything else associated with it. Because I would like to see how many we missed because I feel like we spent a lot of time going over this. Does anybody else remember that? Yeah. All right. Um, uh, so moving on then since we don't have a motion, but it sounds like we do have agreement that we want to, assuming that the bylaw goes through, that we want to um, make some additions at the next, for the next town meeting. Um, uh, two, two issues that kind of might go close together. We did um, remove our accessory apartment bylaw, proposed bylaw from this town meeting. Um, and uh, with the discussion at that point that we would like to um, address issues that were brought forward in some of the public discussion and um, uh, bring forward perhaps hopefully a, a, a new um, accessory apartment bylaw since this is something that people in the town have been asking for. Um, I think that tonight in relation to the accessory apartment bylaws and also if you recall an, a number of months earlier I talked about how some initial research I did when I was first elected chair and people, many people had a lot of ideas about what should be some of the priorities that the planning board has going forward. So um, I kind of like, I have this almost as a placeholder for our next, perhaps our next agenda is that we can sort of um, determine how we might wanna go about um, figuring out some of the planning board priorities, addressing um, bylaws that, need to be perhaps need to be addressed and what would be our priority with that so if you could kind of keep that in your mind for our um our next uh probably our next planning board meeting um and we'll figure out kind of how as a group we want to address this we've had a lot of meetings lately and we may have a lot more in the future so we want to pace ourselves <laughs> does that make sense <clears throat> everybody okay thank you um, so next on the agenda is continuation of the public hearing. Um, and I will um, now read the, um, the continuation statement and reopen the, and, and, and open, reopen the continuation of the public hearing. So it's a continuation of the public hearing of a court ordered remand on the revised application of South Deerfield DG Series LLC for site plan approval pursuant to section 5400 of the zoning bylaw and a stormwater permit pursuant to chapter 155 of the town code for the development of a 9,318 plus or minus square foot dollar general retail store and associated site improvements on an approximately 1.99 acre site located northeasterly of Mill Village Road and westerly of Greenfield Road in Deerfield <clears throat> as further identified in the town assessor's records as map 132, lots 29 and 30 situated in the commercial C2 zoning district. So I will um, open the public hearing on this and begin um, the public hearing with um, a discussion and acknowledgement of a letter that we received from Mark Donahue of Fletcher Tilton uh, Attorneys at Law. We received it on, or it was sent, dated June 3rd, 2021. The letter was sent, uh, sent out to all members of the planning board and um, they have uh, respectfully requested that the matter be continued to the meeting of the board in mid to late August, 2021. So our, um, our 
dis um, our discussion now would be about this continuation. And in fact, um, when we have a motion about the continuation, we would need to include the date of the meeting for the proposed public hearing. Um, so we had said mid to late August, 2021. So before we can even entertain a motion that would say to continue, we would need to have the date that we're continuing to. I don't have my calendar in any event. Um, so ugh. Um, first of all, how does that sound everyone? And secondly, um, can we pull out our calendars and see what might be a possible date in mid to late August for a, a, another planning board meeting? Denise? Question, does it have to be mid to late August? I know it's sort of, it's a difficult time. I know a lot of people are on vacation. I mean, I'm on the beginning of August and we definitely need to have a quorum. Does it need to be August? Can it be September? Good night. Uh, and Mary? So my understanding from our um, dealings and from Adam Costa, our um, town council, was that it is at our discretion that we can say when it is continued to. So we can grant them and we can say, sure, we can do late August, but we can also say, yes, we can continue, but we can choose the date. That's my understanding. Um, Jen, you had your hand up, is that? Um... Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. So if you would like to have a date in September, you could say that. Um, I know I'll just speak up for myself with a new baby on the way that uh, mid to late August is gonna be tough for me, but I would make it work if that's what we needed to do. Well, I, I... I'm going to be gone for um, the end of August and then September, you know, Rachel and I go back to school. So, you know, uh, maybe October might be a better time to take this on. May I ask a question about the length of time that this um, whole process has taken and somewhere in this wonderful book I read, there's something about a two year time frame in which um, something proposed, is that, does that not um, apply to this in any way? Jen, you're shaking your head. Do you want to um, answer right. it? The length of time has been close to that. <laughs> That's once a decision has been made. And so we're still going on the process of getting information. And so Dollar General has requested this continuance because they needed more time to gather information that we've requested. So, I think that it's reasonable to say that if we ask for a date in October, that they would be, you know, willing to do that. I mean, this has been going on since 2018, right, Rachel? I mean, clearly before I was here. So um, I think that if it, you know, because of vacations and school starting and, you know, we want to have you know, Ann Mary and Rachel particularly available because they were most involved in the process prior than the other board members. Right, Denise? I, I completely agree. I mean, we have three educators on the board and I know how difficult it is. <laughs> the, the beginning of the school year is, is really pretty grueling. So I propose that we do it in, in October. And also before they come back, you know, I'm in agreement to continue the hearing, but I think, you know, I, we expect to have an answer, an order of conditions from the conservation commission before we even meet with them. And maybe that's something that we need to discuss with Adam. Adam needs to, you know, discuss with them, but there is no point meeting until we have that. So it sounds like we've got a direction moving towards um, a continuation. I, I, I imagine our first meeting in October is, oh, it's that first Monday in October, whatever that is. Um, that would be uh, October 4th. This would give board members time to get up to speed too. Agreed. Thank you. 
Um, so could we have a motion then to continue the um, uh, South Deerfield DG series LLC site plan here public hearing uh, to October 4th, um, 2021? So moved. Andrea, uh, we have some so moved. Well, have you for discussion, Jen? I was just thinking maybe you could add what Denise said about having the information from yes. the Conservation Commission into the vote. Okay, so the have it on October. The, emotion, the motion would be amended to say that the public hearing would be continued to the uh, Planning Board regularly scheduled meeting of October 4th, 2021, um, pending pending um, completion of the uh, review of this site plan by the Conservation Commission. Yeah, to have the order of conditions, okay, okay. for the CONSCOM. Uh, let's rephrase that then. Denise, you wanna go for it? it? Sounds like you know what- To have the order of conditions from the CONSCOM prior to the meeting prior to the meeting. Prior to the October 4th meeting. Yes. 7 p.m. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, our, the new rule, and I don't know whether that is actually reflected on, I think you've you had conversations with them, but we need to have things close the business day um, on Thursday if we're having a Monday meeting because we're not accepting documents the day of the meeting. Right, we've-, we've, um, we've right. Expose that to everyone. So yes. then, the, then Perfect. potentially, it sounds like our motion is to um, <clears throat> have the uh, to continue the public hearing on October fourth, twenty twenty one, contingent upon that the um, the order of conditions from the Conservation Commission. Is that correct? Yes. Can I read? Can I read it to everyone? What I have written. Sounds okay. Andrea moves to continue the hearing to October 4th, 2021, pending completion of order of conditions from Concom. I think that is quite eloquent, Henry. <laughs> Thank you. May I have a second? I second uh, I'll second it. Nope. <laughs> uh, Denise seconds it. Uh, is there any further discussion? All right. Um, uh, roll call of, um, of votes. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. Anne Mary Cloutier. Anne Mary Cloutier, yes. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Annalie Wolfcool, yes. Kathy Watroba. Kathy Watroba, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. And Andrea Liebson. Andrea Liebson, yes. Thank you. Um, and so then I believe I have to have a motion. Well, then we're just continuing it. So we're just continuing. I don't have to do anything else about anything. Okay. Do you have a hand raised if you're interested right now? Nick, do you want to take somebody's question? I don't. Yeah, sure. I don't see it. So if there's a Nick, yes, go for it, Nick. I just wanted to state that when I uh, listened to Mary Ann Cloutier, uh, repeat it Andrea. back. I, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. And Mary Cloutier, uh, repeat it back that I did not hear the, uh, condition that all the paperwork be submitted the Thursday prior to the meeting. Is that Nick Orsini who said that I need to put it in the. Yes. You okay. want to get the time as well. Cause I don't think you said seven. Okay, and it's so it would be September 30th. That's the Thursday before at seven. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's a good clarification. We are including that in our information for all applicants. So, but hey, <laughs> it's really important to clarify that. All right, <clears throat> and certainly related to this, then as we go to number six on the agenda, um, <clears throat> Adam Costa. Town Council, who has been working closely on 
um, this application, um, has made himself available um, for an executive session with the planning board uh, via Zoom to, um, if, if in fact the Massachusetts orders still allow that, um, to inform us about the status of the litigation. And so this, this of course, being a, a new, new part of our agenda, but um, our, what is the availability? It certainly is important since we have so many members of the planning board who have not been historically with this application for so long that we, we get a, have a good opportunity to um, have some informed discussion about it. So um, are people available on June 21st at 7 p.m. for a, an executive session with town council? Via Zoom? Uh, via Zoom, if math, Massachusetts orders allow, otherwise it would be in person. Okay. I will be away. I can Zoom, but I will not be present. Okay. Okay. However, we are going to have, if, if, even if the board members have to be there for a quorum and town hall, I'm going to still do a Zoom so council can Zoom in. So you're, you're still welcome to go unless the governor's orders say that you're not allowed to um, participate because of the quorum being in person. Um, you can definitely still, you know, zoom in and listen, but just not uh, vote or be part of the quorum. However, I really highly, I think it's really likely that the governor's going to continue with a hybrid model. But we don't know. We have to wait till the 15th. Right. Well, actually, I will be you know, out of state also. So <laughs> we're open for Zoom on the 21st. <laughs> um, are other people able to attend this executive session on the 21st? It looks yeah. as it is. OK. I am tentative at this point. I'm expecting a grandchild, and I may. Me too. <laughs> OK. OK. All right. Um, and Mary has her hand raised. And I, just, I had a question to that. Um, are all town meetings supposed to be televised, even on Zoom? And if they're not on Zoom, that is still the state law, right? We're all for handicap accessible for ADA reasons. Everything should be um, uh, taped, right? Everything should be recorded and everything should be uploaded to the um, town website. I'm correct in assuming that. Well, I'm going to be having a meeting actually tomorrow with FCAT to really understand all of the processes, especially that um, Deerfield has done in the past, because a lot of the small boards and committees recorded their minutes and I needed them up in public within 24 hours. So it didn't mean that they needed to be like accessible, but but the minutes needed to be there in order for people to see what was discussed within 24 hours. So we're trying okay. to keep it even more accessible by having it for the people to have the ability to do it. And so we're gonna see how many FCAT's gonna do and how many we're gonna like farm out to people to do on their their own. I mean, I wrote down a list of all the meetings that I've been running <laughs> this this whole time. And um, right. yeah, so we're just gonna- But as of right now, everything should be on Zoom and everything should be recorded. Like not, not I'm not trying to call you out. I'm just saying, that's what we should be doing as a town, right? Unless the minutes are posted within 24 hours and that's what we've been doing. So if people have met okay. for like, um, like the town common committee has been meeting, um, they would, you know, meet remotely and then I post the minutes within 24 hours. Okay, okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Jen. But our Denver. meetings have always been on F um, YouTube. FCAT has done the like the big boards. I don't mean to diminish any of the smaller boards, but I, uh, smaller boards and committees, but there are certain ones that um, ad hoc committees that have not been in the past uh, videoed and put onto YouTube. And we've been doing as many as we possibly can with our two Zoom accounts, so. Thank you. You're doing a great job as far as I'm concerned. 
Thank you. Right. <laughs> and, and certainly to having those plan B's when there are multiple meetings, multiple board meetings going on, because it, I think it was disappointing not to have the finance committee um, broadcast. broadcast, although they certainly did post their minutes within 20. Four. Yeah, we had four meetings that night. And so we've even been using some other people's private accounts. Thank you, Lily. Um, you know, so, you know, it's helpful when we have other people's accounts, but it didn't seem cost effective for the town. And maybe it will be something that we're going to have to do in the future. And then it's talking about staffing and whether or not the chairs have to run these meetings instead of, you know, myself and Casey and Alex doing, you know, four meetings a week at night so okay thank you jen all right approval not required a and r 18 stockbridge road um some uh the the application was sent out with um the uh, adjoining map and a uh, the request for comments from richard kalczewski uh, from the board of health um, I had sent out just as an FYI uh, some uh, visuals of other maps that are available, but those maps really aren't part of this application. But FYI to our planning board that there are lots of different aerial views and uh, floodplain views and whatnot that uh, can be had if you have the expertise to find it. <laughs> um, so um, with this, I think I will turn over to Jen, as she um, mentioned, and as some of you have seen in the planning board handbook, um, the, the state has a 2010, I believe it is, uh, ANR booklet that is a mere uh, 81 pages, I believe, of uh, pretty good legalese, right, uh, Andrea? <laughs> yeah, so um, Jen is going to nicely go through what the, the highlights of what the planning board really um, has the purview on with ANRs. So I move it over to Jen. Okay, so um, I first took a look at this plan and I'm not a planner, I'm not a building commissioner, I should just add. And so I just had a little red flag sort of come up when I looked at the plan and I asked, um, Dick for the Board of Health to take a look at the plan and had Bob Walden take a look at the plan and to give me their thoughts on that. And after they gave me their comments, I still was feeling uncomfortable with what I had read about ANRs. And so I contacted Adam Costa, um, our council, and he gave me a run through about the purview of what the planning board's responsibility is. Um, it's it. It isn't to say anything about a septic system or floodplains or anything like that. It's, it's delineating the property lines as presented on plans. And there are there is more to learn um, and to look for, I would say, in the future as far as accessibility to that lot because of frontage. So you have to have the right frontage. And this lot does have the right frontage. However, when you look at a plan that's flat, you can't tell if it, the topography is such that you can't ex, um, access the lot. But um, but I think Bob and Dick said that it was, um, don't quote me, but, um, but that is the purview of the planning board is to say that you can designate the two lots. However, he said that the planning board has the ability of putting a note in the corner of where you endorse it that says something that it shall not um, be deemed uh, board of health compliant in the note set, like in a note section next to where you sign it. So that when this, a lot of times people think when you get an a and plan and it gets sent to the registry of deeds and somebody goes, oh, we have a building lot, it's great. Even if it has a note on it that says that they're going to have a, um, I'm sorry, what easement for the septic system. Because when you dig deeper, we have state standards and we also have local board of health um, regulations when it comes to septic systems. 
So then I looked at the Board of Health septic rules um, and regulations that are on our on our website. And after talking to Dick, it would not be in compliance if a if if the lot was sold and a um, a house was put up there because a the septic system would need to be moved. So you can endorse this ANR. It's up to the purview of the planning board to, to do that. You can do that. They can file at the registry of deeds and it wouldn't be until the time that the change of ownership happens that then there would be a, um, a flag that would be raised and then there would be a cease and desist on that property because the septic system isn't compliance with the Board of Health regulations. Whew, that was a mouthful. Or let's say the flood, I mean, it all comes down to the, the next steps later on, a building permit. So if they sell the lot and somehow it gets missed that, um, that the septic for another property is on their property and then they go to put their septic in and you know blah, 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 then the building permit will be held up at that point. So it's up to the applicant whether they wanted to proceed with this ANR um, to, to do that. And we don't know, you know, people, we don't know what the reason is behind it. Somebody wants to come, they want to divide the land, they're giving it to a family member, they're giving it, maybe it's staying in the same family, who knows. Um, but then it would be up to the regulation of the Board of Health and the Building Commissioner at that point, past the Planning Board's decision. So Jen, is this correct to really condense that my takeaway with this is that um, an a and r the, a planning board the planning board's focus with an a and r in general and certainly this one in particular is the lot line it's frontage and lot line so you want to make it so that it has enough frontage on a street i mean sometimes it would be like uh, angles too sometimes we have to watch for yeah. And accessibility, easy accessibility. Right. So by... that you're able to access it from the frontage. So, I mean, that was my takeaway from, from, from looking at it. I had also had the wrong interpretation of it being, maybe it's not wrong. Like if you're going to create, let's say you're cutting, um, there's a house, this isn't this case for this property, but let's say you're adding a, you're cutting a property and you're, there's a house on, on the property and there's another house, there's like a barn on this property. You're gonna to have to make that compliant to our zoning, which is actually, you know, it's not really part of the purview, but you wanna do that because as soon as you approve it, they're gonna get in trouble with zoning, right? So why not help people do that prior to being in trouble, right? Okay, so if the planning board's focus with an A and R is accessible frontage and change and the and the lot line, then it's also our responsibility to sort of take a general look at the property properties and see if there's anything else that might need to be addressed because that's what's that's that's apparently what's coming up with this question of the note, it would be that. But it's, you can't deny it. Let's just put it right. that way. So if you mention it, it's fine that you mention it. And that's why I was saying, you know, a slight side note, because even at a most recent meeting, you know, somebody was saying to me, well, it said it's not a building lot. Well, right, because it's just a property line change. Like it hasn't gone through those steps to say that it's a legal building lot. All right, I think we'll have we'll talk about more that. opportunities for our A and R discussions in the future for sure. Um, other other um, comments? So I'm I'm afraid I'm still a little confused. Um, I can't seem to open this document uh, that that requests the um, the A and R. Is this piece of property being divided, or is it just it's being divided into two lots? Yes. So I can open it for you if you want. Um, sure, you want, please. You want the survey or? Uh, let's see the map, I believe. I mean, I have it also if you want. But. Got it. 
So this is the existing property line. Can you all see it? Yes. Okay. So this is what they're creating, this lot one. However, this is what I was talking about. The septic is over here and it says lot to be subject to easement for maintenance. Let me blow it up. No, I can't. Here's my little, ugh. No, I can't get over, sorry. And working with the lap, little laptop at home. Uh, ma maintenance subject to existing septic. So, so the, the lot line will go here, here, here. This is the frontage over here on Stockbridge Road. And here is the, uh, the house. And if the applicant is here and wants to speak on the behalf, you're um, more than welcome to. Certainly. Yeah, I'm here, but is it what you're saying? I mean, if it's going to be maintained in agriculture, I mean, you're saying if there's a transfer of some sort, you would run into issues with the existing septic, even if it's not a, you know, there's no construction. I guess I don't understand. Well, that would be a question for the Board of Health because in our Board of Health regs, it says about property lines in common ownership and, and it means the whole septic system, which includes the pipes. So the pipes actually leave the property line. So yeah. that's something that you would need to talk mm -hmm. to Board of Health. And you know, I would suggest that you do that because if you are gonna be putting trying to put it into APR land or um, something else, it just, I wouldn't want you to run the risk. I mean, I would just even carve out a different little, like around it <laughs> um, and have the the right distance from property line, which I believe is a hundred feet. Okay. So our reason for putting a note on this is just that at a time of a future, potential future sale or change, that it would be a heads up. Yes. Because we discovered it now. Right, and a lot of times what happens is that this, so this property goes up for sale, let's just hypothetically, and they go to the registry of deeds and they pull this and they're like, oh my gosh, look at this 17, 318. And it says that there's a easement. I love this property, it's beautiful. And then they buy it. And then what? Then they come, with their building plans and the Board of Health says, sorry, we're doing a cease and desist on this property and you can't do anything there until that's resolved. Okay, I understand. So so do you, could can we put this off then in the meantime until I consult? So you would like to, see the thing is, is with an a and R, it needs to be I, you know, I don't have an answer to that. I'm not sure because an ANR needs to be approved within 21 days. And I don't know if that means heard or or approved or denied. And I don't know the answer to that. So, um, can't the ANR be withdrawn? The ANR uh, request be withdrawn until a later time. Yes. Without prejudice. So, yeah. Okay. Can. Would you like to do that, Mr. Lemay? Yes, I guess we'll withdraw it uh, for the time being. And then I can just reapply in the future. Is that what you're saying? Okay. You can change your lot lines if you want it to be around the, the septic system and meet the Board of Health regulations or. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. If we can do that, that would be, be good. We'll make sure we include in our minutes that it was withdrawn without prejudices. Yep. Stated. Thank you. Okay. I have a question about that. Uh, Ann Mary? Without prejudice sounds awesome and I'm happy to type it in there, but can someone explain to me what its purpose is? You want me to? Anyone? <laughs> well, because then if we're, we're not postponing it to a date uncertain, we're not saying that, and then it, you know, we're avoiding that 21 days where it would automatically approve the application. So without prejudice. He's, I understand that part, Jennifer. I'm wondering why we're putting without prejudice. Uh, that's like just the wording that people do when they remove applications from before the board. Okay, thank you. It's almost like we would be starting over when we would evaluate the new application, I believe. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I mean, just like A&R, approval not required. It's another weird 
wording. <laughs> I made a mistake on that one today. All right. Um, good. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. A good discussion, and um, we we'll see what happens. I guess. <laughs> All right, uh, planning board reorganization. There's uh, a hand up. Is that a question? Is there a hand? I don't see a hand. Nick, Nick see me. Pardon me? Nick's hands up. I don't it was know. just a clarification for Anne Mary. Um, so by putting the without prejudice, that's kind of like if an applicant sees that things aren't going their way and they're gonna be like, well, I'm just gonna withdraw my application. Well, then there might be prejudice because he was the the applicant would have seen that their thing was going to fail and they weren't going to get what they wanted, so they would just want to reapply. So by you putting without prejudice, it would state that there were no issues. It was just like a self relief, uh, like they they identified what their own issue was without you guys coming down negatively on it. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, um, next under new business is planning board reorganization. And as um, some of you may see, if you're looking at other agendas for other um, boards and committees, uh, this seems to be the time when after town meeting or town elections that um, officers and appointments are being re-upped for the coming fiscal year. Um, so uh, the officers up for, um, election or re-election on the planning board are chair, vice chair, and clerk. And um, so maybe we can take those one at a time. <laughs> um, so chair. <laughs> I move to continue to have Annalee be our chair. I second that. <laughs> Is there any discussion? Do you want it? Thank you. Yes, yes. I, you know, I said when you know, I was uh, <clears throat> invited to this role <laughs> several months ago that I would see how it would go until June. And um, I've, you know, getting my feet wet and I feel like uh, my feet are just getting wet still so much. So um, I'm going to, if, if you trust me to continue, I will go forward. So there's lots more feet to get wet. So um, then... If there's no, is there any more discussion? Okay, then we'll have a, um, a vote. Um, move, seconded, discussion, vote. Rachel Blaine? Rachel Blaine, aye. Uh, Anne Mary Cloutier? Anne Mary Cloutier, aye. But who seconded that? Uh, Denise did, I believe. I think so, Denise and so. Andrea at the same time. Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, Denise Mason? Denise Mason, aye. Emily Wolf Cole, I. Uh, Kathy Watroba. Uh, Kathy, somewhere. There she is, Kathy. Woo! Yo, Kathy. She's, fro <laughs> she's frozen. That's right. That's what happens, isn't it? All right. We'll see if we can come back to her. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, I. Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, I. Let's see. Is Kathy, oh, it sounds like Kathy still is trying to dial in. Maybe. She disappeared. Yeah. Yeah. Well, while she's dialing in, um, the next would be vice chair. Uh, and Denise Mason is our current vice chair. So that would be next. And then um, clerk, um, one of the things that um, Anne Mary and I have talked about is if, you know, if there are times, as happens, that um, she's not available to um, come to the meeting and take the minutes, um, just wanting to one, wanting to know what the board might want to do with um, having some backup for that. I've done the minutes the last couple of times, but probably don't want to always be the backup for that. So I'll say it looks like we still don't have Kathy. Hmm. Well, but Annalie, we, we had, I mean, if we had, uh, yeah, of course. Right. So, so she's back. Back. Um, yeah. I also want to. Kathy, Kathy, can we hear you for. Yes. 
Yay, she's back. And you're the last person to go on, on chair. I or no for Annalie Wolf cool for chair. I think you. Okay. Hi. Anna Wolf. Wolf thank you. All right. And thank you very much, everybody. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm working on it. Everybody's working hard, right? All right, Vice Chair, I would like to nominate um, Denise Mason. I second. Any discussion? Denise? I'm happy to continue working with you. Great. All right, um, so we'll have a, a vote. Rachel Blaine? Rachel Blaine, aye. Anne Mary? Amy include your aye. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, aye. Annalie Wolfpool, aye. Kathy Botrova. Kathy Botrova, aye. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, aye. And Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, aye. Right. Okay. And um, Clerk. May I ask a question about Clerk? If um, Anne Mary is not available, is it possible to have a staff member from the town offices? take notes. I have served as secretary for other boards and find if you are taking notes, it is hard to participate. We are actually, if my speak. Yes, no. yes, certainly, Jen. Thank you. So we're trying to rework that and we're in the midst of it. Once we figure out what we're going to do with the governor's orders on the 15th, we're considering having a staff member be the person that participates, runs the meeting and takes the notes. So whether or not that, you know, we'll see how that plays out and then they would just substitute their time, you know, for another day off, you know, like some time off during the day. Um, so that is a great possibility. And then the clerk can do other responsibilities, but at this moment it is an, in stone. All right. Well, we're obviously waiting for the governor also. So, um, but that yep, it is, it is recorded. So yep. there's an opportunity. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think it's also would be a really helpful is if you have a staff member that's involved that then knows the details for next meetings and votes and who said what, and sometimes it's miscommunicated with listening or watching these. Mm -hmm. So, um, I highly recommend it. And so I'm working with the town administrator and staff to figure out what we're gonna do in our next steps. Great. Well, and if all the notes are the same, it's much easier for townspeople to read and understand and, you know, yes. gain a, you know, better understanding of how the town works over time if everything's, you know, the same. Yes, Casey has a certain format that she really likes to be used and so, um, that's what, the way we would move forward. Oh, okay. Well, if she wants to send us that format now, that's good too. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll appreciate that. All right. So, um, Denise, you were elected, right? Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> good. <laughs> um, and uh, clerk, uh, can we have um, a nomination for clerk? I. I actually would like to nominate Anne Mary. Second. Thank you, Andrea. Um, is there any discussion? First, we'll have Anne Mary. I'm just honored to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Great speech. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's call the question. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, aye. Anne Mary. Aye. Uh, Good. Denise Mason. Yes. Uh, Emily Wolfcool, yes. Kathy Wittroba. Next. Who is still, uh, no, let's see. Yes. yes, yes, good. Kathy Sylvester. Yes. And Andrea Leibson. Yes. Excellent. Well, um, onward, 20, fiscal year 2022, right? Um, now, our, our next uh, reorganization every year, we, all, we do have a number of um, boards or committees that have requested or require planning board participation, one of which is the Capital Improve Improvement Planning Committee. Um, <clears throat> our representative, Denise, um, who really has only been on for a couple of months now, right? It was, yep. yeah. And um, Denise, I 
I believe you're still interested in staying on capital improvement. I am, and I think Jeff Upton loves having me on that committee, don't you, Jeff? Yes, I do. Okay, good. I know we're we're like this, so <laughs> I'm happy to continue. Okay. I mean, actually, yeah, I've only been on for a few months, but it's really interesting. So I would I would love to continue. Thank you. Um, so can I have a uh, nomination? I move to that Denise continue on the Capital Improvement Committee. Thank you, Anne Mary. Second. second, Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, second. Um, all right. Any discussion? Um, so we'll call the question. Rachel. Rachel Blaine, aye. Anne Mary. Anne Mary Clutier, aye. Denise. Denise Mason, aye. Emily Wolfquill, aye. Kathy Wetroba. Kathy Wetroba, aye. Kathy Sylvester. <clears throat> Kathy Sylvester, aye. And Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, aye. Okay, we're, my goodness, I'm, I'm really amazed. This is really going well. Whoa. Uh, Capital, <clears throat> Capital Preservation Committee, CPC. Um, this is the committee that oversees funds that can be directed in um, certain areas such as affordable housing, parks, and two other areas that I can't remember. And I'm the representative historical. right now. <laughs> um, open space. Open space. Historical. And, and historical, right. And Cemeteries and stuff too. Yeah, um, it's um, <clears throat> Tim Ilchie is the chair and um, they meet regularly before town meeting and then probably somewhat irregularly in the rest of the year. I'm the representative now. Mm -hmm. I'm certainly excited if anyone would be interested in taking my place. If not, I'll continue, but um, <clears throat> it's a good group. Uh, Lily Dwight, Tim Hilchey, myself. Uh, is Carolyn on it? I don't remember. In any event, no. No Chuck way. Shattuck. Pardon me? Chuck Shattuck. Is yes. Chuck? Yeah. Yeah. And only if you wanted to move away from doing that, I would throw my hat in the ring, but only if you're not interested. Only oh, if you're that would be wonderful, Anne Mary. That'd be great. Thank you. All right. I, I nominate Anne Mary Cloutier for CPC representative. I second it. Rachel Blaine. Thank you. Any discussion? <clears throat> All right. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, aye. And Mary Cloutier. Mary Cloutier, aye. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, aye. Emily Wolfcool, aye. Kathy Watroba. Kathy Watroba, aye. Uh, Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, aye. And Andrea Liebson. Andrea Liebson, aye. All right. Congratulations, and Mary. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you lucked out, too two elections in one night. <clears throat> All right, um, next on the agenda for new business is a contract, potential contract renewal, renewal for Chris Curtis. Um, Chris, as I think everyone here knows now, has been a consultant with us on a number of um, <clears throat> bylaws, most recently for us right now, solar site plan review and accessory apartments. Um, uh, he has, we did um, renew his contract a few months ago and with all the flurry of activity and whatnot prior to town meeting, um, I think he has about 12 or 14, 15 hours left on his contract. So he still does have some time available for us. Um, there is the question of um, us and how we might want to go forward with accessory apartments and also with solar. So. Um, uh, the, I, I did send out the draft contract. Um, having the contract doesn't necessarily meaning, mean we're doing accessory apartments, solar, or anything else, but it's nice to have that contract there and ready for us. And Chris certainly has been incredibly valuable. So that would be my thought. Um, so is there any discussion about that or comments? I'm glad that we have such such uh, consulting available to us. Absolutely. Thank you, Andrew. All right. 
Um, ben, could I have a motion to renew um, Chris Curtis's so, contract? What, how much, how, can I just, so can we talk a little bit about what it is that we're moving into? Because we have a lot, we move it, we, we, we moved a lot forward right now and we need to kind of focus in, I think on a, one and another and another. We had Chris looking at so many different things and we've spent the last six months, you know, with public hearings scattered in between redrafts um, and we, we have a lot going. And I, I feel f I'm, I'm concerned. I just think that we need to focus in. I think that Chris is, been guiding us in a lot of ways, different directions. I'd, I'd like to, I think some of it, to be honest, I would blame Zoom. I think that we're not kind of looking at each other and we don't have the document before us always. Um, we're looking at on a screen. I've been the one moving the screen up and down. Um, and I just, I, I wonder if we shouldn't be um, hiring Chris for a project and not as a blanket consultant. I, I feel somehow that, and, and I think that's how we got first got engaged with him. To be honest, I wasn't in on that initial, um, and it worked out, you know, that we had projects um, that we wanted to work on. But I just feel like I don't, I'd rather see it project by project and not as a consultant across the board right now. Um, so that we are, I think Chris mm -hmm. has a very particular point of view, and I, I don't know that I've always understood what it was as he moved forward. Um, and so I'd like to understand that better. And when we've been jumping from a, a topic to another topic, um, I feel like we're not able to tie into that topic as clearly mm -hmm. or as, uh, as, as, as focused as we might be otherwise. Um, so that, that's my, I, I have some concerns about it. Mm -hmm. Kathy and then Denise. Okay. I think Denise had her hand up. Go um, ahead, Denise. Oh, it's okay. No, I, I agree with Rachel. I think I like Chris. I mean, obviously you've worked with him longer than we have, but I agree that I would prefer project by project. And regardless, okay, so if the solar is voted in, that's terrific, but we still have probably an amendment or two to make on that just to, to clean things up a bit. So I think that's the first thing I'd like to do. And then I'd like to after that, then possibly continue the accessory dwelling, which I think there are still a few issues with that. I don't know if that makes sense, but I agree. I think I think it would just do one at a time instead of spreading spreading ourselves too thin. Makes right. Sense. I think this does go to the possible conversation at our next meeting of how are we going to go about setting our priorities in a fund. Mm. Right. <laughs> Kathy Watroba. So I guess my question is, how does it change the contract, right? Like, how does it change his his um, pay scale on the contract? So I mean, I, I, if we have a contract for X amount, we can ask that be, liver, be delivered how, how we see fit, right? Whether it be by um, uh, consulting, situation or a project situation. I guess I'm curious if, if or how it would change his contract, it would still be our resource. Right. It's right how we choose to utilize that resource. So does it change the contract? Right now the contract is for um, $3,500. It mentions accessory apartments and any other bylaw work that we might determine. Okay. We could, I'm sure that Chris would be amenable to this if we decided to have it be for consulting work as determined by the planning board. And ultimately, if we don't, you know, if we don't, if we decide to scratch solar and accessory apartments or anything else, we don't have to employ the contract, but we would have it there in our back pocket if we wanted to then move forward with um, certainly with those two issues. So we would change the language within the contract, but still maintain um, his availability for projects or what have you. I mean, we, wouldn't, well, uh, we, we would still 
We'll have the resource available, but worded differently in this contract, that's all. The contract right now says the consultant will assist the planning board in drafting and finalizing bylaws for three to four areas of planning as identified by the planning board to the extent that contract hours permit. And that mentions accessory bylaws and other bylaw work as time permits. And that's what the what the current contract says. I mean, it could be it could be bylaw work as determined by the planning board or consulting. I mean, he works with the bylaws, but yeah, I ask a question. Yes, absolutely. Really? Does he care? The, about the content of the um of the bylaws right. if not why not why don't we just be general and say right to work with us as as needed i'm quite sure he would be up to a certain you know with a specific uh time frame or specific dollar amount or hours mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm sure he would be very amenable to that mm -hmm. rachel looking at the contract again now so because it is specified in the contract right now right. Um, and it doesn't oh, okay so it, it isn't ours it's based on um there's an hourly rate isn't there an hourly rate right but it's based on a, like, like, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and yeah. a cap so yes yeah. And that's what's happened before as he's been working on specific bylaws if we when we've gotten close to running out of hours we renew the contract i mean so does it seem reasonable to so i think the contract still exists it's the wording within the contract pardon me andrea or, that wasn't me uh, i'm sorry i couldn't see who it was that was me Oh, Kathy, sorry, yes. Here, let me- um... That's okay. So the contract still will exist, but it's the, um, this is the language within it. Here it is right here. Can you see that? It's where, I can't get it bigger, I guess, I don't know. I read it, I did read it earlier. The section right here that it would assist the planning the scope of work for a year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't believe we have to be more specific than it would say to um, out, you know, he would, uh, he would work with drafting and finalizing bylaws as identified by the planning board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah. You know. Since the contract hours permit period. How would that be? Yeah. yeah. Yes. And then we would, so we would take out the three to four hours of planning priority and we would take these two sections out. I think that seems like a good approach. Are, is there other discussion? I wish I could find my slide for this. Oh, oh here we go. Boom. And. What's this? There we go. What do you know? I found strike through. I was like, All right. So um, we can have a motion to approve the contract as amended and seconded, and then we'll still have an opportunity for some discussion. So um, could I have that motion? I so move. This is Andrea. Thank you, Andrea. I second it, Kathy. Kathy Sylvester, thank you. And, um, any other discussion? All right. Um, all those in favor? Um, it, Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, aye. Um, I don't know how to get you all back here. <laughs> how do I stop? Oh, here we go. <laughs> uh, and Mary Cloutier. And Mary Cloutier, aye. Denise Mason. Mason, aye. Emily Wolfpool, aye. Kathy Watroba, why do I always stop? I. <laughs> Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, I. And Andrea Liebson. Andrea Liebson, I. Excellent. All right. Thank you. So the motion passes unanimously. 
Okay. Um, we did have some mail. The one encouraging thing for me is I received mail today was it looks like all the other towns are just about as busy as we are. Um, <clears throat> Waitley's having two ZBA public hearings on the same night, June 3rd at 7 p.m. It's a, regarding a special permit to establish marijuana manufacturer and processor. And at 8 p.m. it's a, regarding a special permit for marijuana cultivation. Uh, in Greenfield, there are two, also two ZBA um, well, announcements. One is that the announcement was that the Greenfield ZBA has granted a special permit for a woodworking and car cleaning business. But secondly, the ZBA is planning a public hearing for June 10th at 715 regarding a special permit to allow an off-premises sign for Terraza restaurant. And then the last piece of mail was Montague ZBA is planning a public hearing on June 16th at 6.30 p.m for a special permit for a rear yard setback relief. Kind of interesting knowing what's going on with some of these other places. Rear yard setback relief. We can have that too, right? <laughs> uh, two, and we in fact have two pieces of business um, that are um, unanticipated 48 hours prior to posting. Um, the first one is, um, I'll set it up and then Denise can go forward. Uh, the planning board opining on the APR land sale contribution, um, an APR land sale contribution that in fact is coming forward to town meeting. So um, Denise, could you begin and also say what an APR is? Sure, it's, oh good grief, it's, <laughs> Agricultural preservation restriction. I speak in acronyms. I have to tell them I don't remember what they mean. But yeah, I was, and I can't remember which meeting I was on. It was with the select board. And actually, this is just a procedural thing because it's already been voted by the select board. And just to let you know that this, we haven't done this in, I think, 15 years, according to Carolyn. So what it is, is I think all of you received this. I don't know if you all had the opportunity to take a look at it but the um, land is on South Mill River Road. So if you go down 116 and make a right onto South Mill River, it's that farmland right there, as far as I understand. And so what they wanna do, I guess there was death in the family and they want to, she want, I guess she's got a number of siblings. And so in order to do that, she needs to um, put it into APR. And then I think, the value of the land is 130,000. So we would be putting 10%, which is $13,000. And it is, you know, according to the select court, obviously, and you know, my thoughts are that it's really important to, to continue to be able to use this as farmland. So I know that in their application, they said they, they want to, I mean, that's their main goal so that it's not, you know, developed. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess it's really prime farmland. So this is just really, regardless of whether we vote yes or no, it's still going through. So it's really just procedural. I'll say as an aside in one of the meetings that I attended that discussed this, um, apparently there are, there's at least one if not several adjacent pieces of land that also are under the agricultural APR. Yeah. And so what we're almost developing there is a bit of a swath of land that is protected right. and, um, so that would be cool. Yeah, our, if, if, um, what we can do is have a motion and then we can have some discussion. It would be a motion is, would be to support the... Um, the 10% the for right. APR. The, right, as proposed by the Capital Improvement Planning Committee and endorsed by other committees. Does the money, may I ask, does the, does the money come from um, the CPA? as part of the, the yeah. preservation? Yes, I believe, doesn't it? Yes. Yep, so we just changed numbers in the warrant. So it just allocated it. Je Jeff, do you wanna say anything? Were you? No, I'm good, thank you. But that is correct. So um, I guess, could we have a motion to support the um, 
land sale contribution APR for this property on Mill, is it Mill River Road? So moved. Thank you, Andrea. Rachel Blaine, second. Thank you, Rachel. Um, any more discussion? All right. Um, should know this by heart now. Rachel Blaine. Blaine, aye. And Mary Cloutier. Mary Cloutier, aye. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, aye. Emily Wolfcool, aye. Kathy Watrova. Kathy Watrova, aye. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, aye. And Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, aye. Excellent. Okay. Um, our last um, other business, not reasonably anticipated, um, you will see with in the town meeting warrant, it's Article 2B um, that um, there is a request what did I put this here, for um, $6,200 um, to be transferred, I believe it's from free cash to pay for, to, to pay for a, um, uh, let's see, what does it say? It says uh, transfer of free cash, $1,600 to fund fiscal year 2019 unanticipated bill for, deal, <laughs> for Deer, Deerfield MA planning board peer review in relation to the Dollar General um, discussions. Um, apparently this is a bill that was, um, it was an expense that was generated in 2019. There were a number of areas where this fell through the cracks. It fell through the crack, cracks with, with the town, with the applicant, with the consultants. Um, there had just been a lot of um, missteps. But unfortunately, with the $6,200, um, the bill is resting in our laps and the town is at risk if we don't pay it. What and is it for? It was for peer Time review, bound. tie and bond, tie and bond peer review for Dollar General site plan application. And um, yeah, uh, Denise and then Jen. Yeah, I was going to uh, ask Jen to speak to that because Jen and I worked on that a little bit. So Jen. Right. So I've been actually working on it for quite a while because yeah. this bill came in very late. So what had happened was the applicant had agreed to pay for a peer review. And if there was subsequent peer reviews that needed to get like more than they were going to pay for that. So what happened was um, there was an amendment to that peer review. It went back to the planning board. The planning board voted and agreed to it, signed the document, but we didn't collect the money before signing the document. Error number one. <laughs> so then it was lost in translations, missed in different administrations, different staff, whatever happened. And then the work was completed on the peer review. And then we finally got the bill a couple of years later. For number the two, <laughs> issue number two. <laughs> yeah. So then we tried to, um, collect the funds, which it was just done backwards. Like we should have had the funds and then signed saying that we agreed to the amendment to the first peer review. So we have a couple places that it, it, it fell through the cracks. And so now we owe this money and we have to um, move funds around in order to pay it. So we wanted to, I wanted to bring this forward to the planning board today so that you don't come to town meeting on Saturday and say, wait a second, what is this? <laughs> this wasn't, this isn't something that is, um, that, I mean, it just needs to be paid. And so we put it on the warrant in order to, to, to get paid. It's not for any no. of you vote, anything. A four year information piece. Yes. Right, Denise? Ben, I was just going to ask you if you'd heard back yeah, no, Casey From, said that Adam had already tried and they had already spoken about it prior to you, you know, you and prior to you and I sending that to him. And so he uh -huh. did not respond because it was at a point that it just, it was done in the wrong way in the first place. And. Okay. But you know what? I understand it was done wrong, but still 
you know, they agreed to that. What was it? November 4th, uh, two hours, 22 minutes and four seconds into the meeting, something like that. I remember we found where John said the applicant will pay for that. That was not disputed. OK, so okay. that was a verbal agreement, which is it probably yeah, was held up in court in our litigation moving forward, Denise, honestly. So I don't know. I don't know all yeah. the details. I mean, we did um, okay. check with Casey before tonight's meeting and um, right. she said that, you know, Adam is fully aware. And so what goes on and all right, you know, that world. Is I just want to make sure that it does not reflect poorly on the planning board because and certainly, you know, you, anyone can lay blame on someone but not lay blame on the planning board right now. So if that comes up, I want to make sure that that doesn't happen. Well, it's also, you know, Ty and Bond sent the bill way after. What we really needed to do is the town needed to collect the funds. Yeah. Here to signing anything. And so, you know, hindsight. Oh boy. Okay. It, the money wasn't collected. Right. In, in, in the chat, <coughs> excuse me, there's the citation for section 54. 432 of our site plan review, current site plan review bylaws that, in fact, we, you know, Lily has mentioned that we, we are in a position to be able to require offsite <clears throat> assessments and at the expense of the applicant. Lily, if you want to. Um, yeah, so that is the law in our bylaws. And also, I, I, I'm sorry, I had to jump out for a while and I came back and I missed the history, but I spoke with the VP at Tie and Bond, oh, maybe about six months ago about this particular bill. And I said, have they paid you yet? And she said, no. That's right. They have not been paid. Right. And, but not, but the bill was to Liscotti, which she led no. me to believe was that Liscotti had not paid them. And that's what they were waiting for. And I believe it came up in the ZBA as well. I think John Staberski brought it up. Town. Sorry? Money goes through the town. So Lascotti would pay the town and then the town would pay tie-in bond. Because the planning board asked for the peer review. So the first peer review was paid. Then they had an amendment to that first peer review. Then that was um, signed off from the planning board to pay for it. Then it just sort of disappeared. And then it then we got a bill a few months ago after a couple years. Hmm. But we should have collected the funds from Lascotti prior to the amendment being so I, I guess what I'm saying, Jen, is when I spoke to the VP, it's a woman whose name I cannot recall right now. I have it in my notes somewhere. They were trying to get the money from the Scotty. That might be why it hasn't come up to the town because they were trying to do that. Like, it was like months. So, and then I tried. I Years. tried prior to you know prior to um, Denise and I sending this. I also tried um, you know contacting first. It was Mark Donahue. Then it was Chad Bubrat. Ruth Baker and you know it's like I sent several emails and followed up and then you know it was just then it was like silence crickets and so then um, I included Adam Costa our counsel in it and you know then litigation started happening so so there is also section uh, 5433 failure by the applicant to submit any of the required materials may constitute grounds for denial of the site plan application. And I would certainly think that a large unpaid bill would count as something like that, like the failure to submit. So um, maybe we can get Lascotti to pay up by pointing out that section of the bylaw. It just feels really wrong to me that I'm sorry, but these guys come in, they rip out all the trees, they ignore all of our laws, they they call the citizenry mobs, they call us all these names, they denigrate the chair of our boards, and then we pay their bills. It makes me sick to my stomach, and I will get off my soapbox. But anyway, that, I just wanted you to know about those two sections of the bylaw as well. 
Thank you. Good point. Good point. Well taken, Lily, and let's keep that in mind as we move forward. <laughs> all right. Um, that was all of the business not anticipated 40 hours prior. Um, our next meetings, um, we have, we, we do recognize that July 12th is our next regularly scheduled planning board meeting. Uh, June 21st is our executive session uh, with Adam Costa. And then the other thing we were hoping to schedule or to try to figure out was when we could have our planning board training session. So. Annalie, can I? Yes. Bring up something that wasn't anticipated. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. I, I, sorry, before we go. And Mary, unanticipated. <laughs> um, in thinking about town meeting and in, um, I think, everyone's sort of efforts to get the vote out, this has occurred to me to a, a couple of times, but I've never thought of it while in a meeting before. And I was wondering, um, I know that we have some discretionary funds, and has it ever been um, our place or our idea to buy vote today signs or town meeting today signs um, or town meetings? Saturday or vote this weekend. Um, I would be interested in a higher voter turnout um, and I would be interested in that sort of information, you know, putting that sort of information out there. We can talk about it at our next meeting. Um, it's not gonna happen for this year's uh, or for this um, season's town meeting, but I did wanna put it out there um, to see if we do have discretionary funds and if that is something that we have discretion to do. Very interesting. Okay. Huh. Well, if we're potentially going to have a town meeting in the fall, um, we could address this at, uh, at uh, a July or August meeting when there would be time to order such signs and find out how much they cost and whatnot. So, um, and you know, discussion beforehand. So, great people. It's it's hard to get people out. <laughs> so, um, certainly, it seems like the best uh, turnout has always been, or at least the ones that I've attended, have been when they've been in person in the school auditorium. But that won't be maybe for a while. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. Okay. Well, it's going to be seventy-seven in person. Sunny. 70, oh, well, good, instead of 97 and <laughs> dripping. I also have bug spray and suntan lotion. <laughs> Excellent, and chairs, and chairs? Chairs, yes, and bring your own if you want, um, but, and I think there may be some water, I'm trying. <laughs> All right, excellent, good. Okay. So um, what are people's thoughts about a training session? First, first thing you need to do is pick up your handbook and then, um, I think we're probably talking about what an hour, ninety minutes, Denise. Oh, I would say I would say ninety minutes to two. I'd say two hours. Yeah. Okay. I'm just to make it okay. <laughs> it could be less. It's all right. That's okay. But right. If we if we've all read our A and R, and memorized it, be in person. <laughs> yeah, we could. I think that would be good. That would be really nice. Yeah, that would be good. So and I will, I will be away June thirteenth to twenty seventh. I would definitely like to do this in person. Um, so it would, ha I would prefer that it were after June twenty seventh. Okay. Um, I don't know if anybody has any. Um... June thirteenth. Yeah, that's. Wow, that's busy anyway, yeah. Do you want to send a, like a doodle poll out? I or think something? a doodle's See? a great idea because I, I'm trying to think after the, you know, later in the month is better for me as well. Andrea, I'm next week is cuckoo -cuckoo for me. But, and then after that, I'm a little less clear about what I have. Right, thought. right. Could uh, you, so could you send us a doodle, Denise? Would you be willing? Um, you know? yeah, sure. Sure. And it sounds like maybe it would be um, certainly, well, ugh, 
yeah, we've already got two meetings in June, counting our executive session, and then we'll have our next planning board meeting July 12th. So potentially after, well, sometime. but a Monday night would be nice. Okay. Does that, you know, Mondays? No. Right. Okay. That, that's a. I have that. Please hold. It. So maybe a Monday night in July. So when I look at the calendar, the fifth is uh, a holiday. The twelfth is our meeting. What about the 19th or 26th? Instead of having to send a doodle out. A doodle. And then you might time try different times too in a doodle because we've been doing things in the evening, but maybe there are afternoons and evenings. I don't know, Kathy, what your deal is, but. Can anyone do during the day? I mean, I can. Can we all? No. no Kathy can't. No. Only, only on a Friday, I can do during the day. Right, so let's try a do doodle pool poll for. Um, try some Friday mornings. Friday morning? Kathy's free Friday. I can do Friday mornings. Um, and starting in July, I have every other Thursday off. So July 8th and the 22nd. Maybe Kathy should do the doodle. <laughs> <laughs> I could, I could do it. It's fine. That's I just a great have idea. All right, good. Thank okay. you, Kathy. <laughs> you are welcome. So, do you want to do you want to do some thurs, Thursdays and Fridays and mornings when you do the doodle? Sure. Okay. And we're just focusing in on July. Okay. Okay. Uh, the only thing is, I honestly don't know if I'm going to be here or Baltimore. So, in the early part of July. Oh, in the early part. Okay, so how about the mid mid July? Mid to late. Yeah, mid to late. It all depends on that baby, but uh, probably that'll work. Okay. All right. I just want to. You you two have to lay off. Those of us who covet grandchildren are kind of a little biffed <laughs> you know, by all this grandbaby talk. Because honestly, <laughs> yeah, I've waited a long time for this. Okay. Hey, I have a cat. Hey. Not. <laughs> I have a really have a annoying cat. In August, <laughs> so maybe I'll be able to join this uh, grandparent thing at some point. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll trade you my cat for grandchild. <laughs> oh, we heard your cat. Takers. This was harder than almost anything else in the agenda. Hey, uh, good meeting. Everybody really tried hard, I think, to raise hands and um, be succinct and still catch the essence of what we needed. So I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you to all the participants who have um, come this evening. And uh, that's a continued reason for loving hybrid with Zoom at least. Because yeah. Yeah. You can come a lot more easily. All so right. Good and, Allie, and thank you, Jennifer, for sticking with us. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Get your books. Oh, oh yeah. You down. You down. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? I move that we adjourn. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll have a, uh, yeah, roll call, roll call, roll call. Rachel Lane. Aye. Yeah. Aye. <laughs> uh, <laughs> aye. All right. Thank you all very much. And uh, we'll see you, I don't know what, July, June 21st, executive No, Saturday. no, no, Saturday, June 12th. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. oh, my God. Oh, God. Get the vote out. Get the vote out for sure. Oh my gosh. Do everything you can to bring your friends. Yes. We Lots should of have friends. We want to do these all over again. <laughs> all right. all yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.